If this video gets 1,000 likes, I'll purchase and do a full tactical review of the Hogue toilet seat. Oh hi there, today we are doing a knife review of a knife by Hogue, or Hogway, who really knows? Um, so we've got the EX04 here, we've got some notes with all the specs on it and whatnot. Uh, this was loaned to me by Scott who sent me the other Hogway, or Hogway, a Hog, Hogue knife, and uh, also a Hogue Tenter, which he said I could have, which I'll do a video on as well, which was very nice of Scott. There should be more Scots in the world, that is for sure. So, um, this is a fairly tactical style knife, and I've used and carried it for a couple of weeks now, and I use it for a few different things, and of course, I've got my thoughts on it. But first of all, the specs. So, an overall blade length of 3.375 inches. So definitely a little bit bigger than most of my EDC knives. Actually, these days it's about the same as all my EDC knives. I've gravitated towards a larger size, I must admit. The blade is made of 154cm steel, which is treated to 57 to 59 Rockwell. It's a little bit softer, a little bit more prone to be twisted and uh, treated roughly, perhaps. Um, the blade thickness 0.15, so about 3.7 or so millimeters, getting towards being a little bit of a thicker and beefier blade. Um, you've got a spear point, they call it. I would say it's just a drop point, but it has a top swedge that doesn't quite connect up with the tip. Who knows? Much of a muchness, I would say. Uh, it has a uh, handle length of 4.625 for an overall length of 7.875 inches. Uh, the handle material is G10, in this one it is black, they do a couple of other materials as well. Um, it has a stainless steel uh, insert, so you've got the uh, liner lock side is of course stainless steel, and on the other side you've got some milled out stainless steel liners, you've got a G10 backspacer, and a little G10, I don't know, pressure point poker or something on the very end, and a little lanyard, well not a hole, a little lanyard nook in there as well, which is kind of cool. So um, yeah, those are the overall specs, but I'll show you some size comparisons because that always helps uh, me drive home how big or small a knife actually is. So let's look at it first next to the Spyderco Dragonfly. Spyderco Dragonfly is a very small knife with a very thin blade, a really good daily carrier, coin pocket carrier, much different to this Hogue knife. Uh, next to the Swiss Army knife, just as more of a standard or a staple that most people have a rough size idea of. And next, the Spyderco Delica. Sort of the same purpose as the Swiss Army knife. Everyone's, um, everyone who's into knives has a general idea about how big a Delica is. The Tangram Santa Fe is the next knife, just to show you a different blade shape. Also a thinner blade and just a slightly smaller and much sort of more light duty knife, I would say. Steel wheel modus, about the same size as this one. Uh, kind of feels maybe the same kind of purpose, although I would say the Hogue is probably a bit more overbuilt. And then lastly, a bigger knife than this one, the Spyderco Caribbean is a, uh, a larger knife, uh, which has sort of replaced the American Lawman a little bit in my um, daily use or my purposes of use. So there we are. So let's talk about the features of the knife. So these are features that are you know thoughtfully designed or you know good parts, I guess you could say. So these are good features of the knife. So let's get cracking on them. So the first thing is the nice neutral ergonomics to the handle. So you look, it's a very, very simple shape. Has a, has got a large index finger notch, as most flipper knives will, because no one really wants to have a, a harsh corner running straight into the flipper tab. But um, yeah, overall, you feel... Not very tactical. <laughs> overall, um, your fingers will fit however you really want them to fit along this straight line here. And then obviously a whole top of your hand sits comfortable in this slightly declining curve. And then your index finger fits pretty happily into the 
large index finger portion of the handle. And there we go. Uh, the flipper tab obviously stops any hint of your hand flying forward onto that blade because it is very, very tall indeed. So we've got, uh, yeah, good ergos. Uh, the blade steel is good, 154 cm. Uh, it's definitely the upper level of uh, the non-powdered steels. And it's got a good level of stainlessness, a good level of edge retention, better than most uh, non-stainless steels i found, 154 cm. Um, they've satin finished it. It's a really nice, smooth feeling satin finish, which is not adverse to being used, which I guess is uh, good for a knife such as this, because this is definitely a harder use knife, I would say a rough use knife, so that finish will mark, uh, mask most marks. Tongue mm -hmm. twister for you there. Um, and yeah, the nature of the steel is that you can pretty much just wash it off under a tap. If it gets dirty, um, you don't need to worry too much about oiling it. I mean, if you, you probably are going to anyway, because you're probably a knife dude who has knife oil or mineral oil of some sort. But um, overall, less care is needing to be taken for 154 cm. Um, and yeah, you can strop it back, I found as well. That was just operating on the edge that was provided to me. Whether it's the factory or not, I found that with this, and it looks like quite a steep, it looks maybe it's 20 degrees or something, um, I can strop this back pretty easily without having to do much else to it to get it back to being paper slicing sharp. So that's really cool. Good steel choice overall for a harder use knife, especially given that I've lowered the Rockwell just a smidge. So um, what else have we got? A versatile blade shape. Yes, that is a yeah, pretty much a drop point. Um, it's got some flat, it's got a small amount of belly. I wouldn't have minded just a little bit more belly perhaps. I'll talk about why later. Um, but yeah, it's got some flourishes. It's got this um, swedge here, which says Hogue on one side and Alan Alishowitz's name on the other side. Um, yeah, just a generally nice looking blade. And also it's got a blade grind design for strength. So it's got a low or a medium height saber grind, really. So you've got a flat here and then the primary bevel is flat too, uh, going down into your sort of smaller V bevel. Um, that is a very strong grind. You can definitely use this knife for prying and the tip is thick right up until about the last sort of, geez, I'd even say quarter of an inch. It's actually what we'd call still thick. And even at the tip, it is certainly robust. So you've got a good blade shape for what I feel is the purpose of use behind the knife. So, and that is, I guess, another thing I should cover. I would say this is a knife maybe for a policeman or something like that. It's a, it's a knife that's probably going to be used not for finesse cutting, but for prying jobs, but something that's going to also fold away and get stored in an LBE or something like that, um, rather than having to carry around a fixed blade knife, which some police forces probably just don't allow, and others that would just prefer to maybe keep it a bit more on the low down away from the eyes of people who could just grab it because not every sheath not every sheath comes with um, retention uh, methods so uh, although that being said the Hogue Tanto I have does actually have a sheath that comes with a a muscle memory retention system so there you go um, but yes that is probably the purpose and I think the blade shape and the general design of the knife fit that purpose very very well getting back towards the lanyard hole I like how they've made it so it's not right in your face. I don't use lanyards at all, um, never interests me. But you could definitely thread a piece of, you know, reasonable size cord through there and um, get a lanyard skull bead going or whatever your tastes are. Not for me, but if it's for you, then you are, you are still cared for and accounted for by Hogue in this instance. So there we go. Um, what else? The pocket clip. I like the pocket clip on this knife. I think it's a really cool and really different pocket clip. It goes into the pants really easily. It's got some nice ramp on it. Has a lot of space for bigger, thicker pockets, which is, you know, again, in line with the purpose, I'd say. Has a cool standoff system, so it's sort of raised away from the body of the knife. And it's actually in a way that it's not hindering at all the ergonomics, even when it's tip up. Because often I find that tip up, as cool as it is to carry, it's still probably my preferred carry, tip up is sometimes a little bit uncomfortable with pocket clips. The pocket clip sometimes sits in this area of my hand, which I don't like. But this one here is really, really nice for tip up. It's, uh, I guess it's a bit of a longer pocket knife clip. And yeah, it's um, yeah, just flat. It's flat whilst at the same time having ramps. So really, really happy with that. I think it's a cool clip for sure. So those are the features that I would say a normal tea drinking loser like me would find um, in this Hogue knife. But let's talk about the people who are probably the target market. And that is... The sheepdogs. You're oh. compromising our mission. Go. War has changed. 
So the Sheepdog features for this one here are the G10 Backspacer is a striker for some Coubertin style pressure point working. So you've got the knife in your hand, you've just cut through your hostages, you can you see someone, he's coming, he's unarmed though, you don't want to use lethal force on him, your body is probably a lethal weapon, um, but you don't want to kill him with your knife, you just need to incapacitate him, close your knife blade, lock it into your hand, thanks to that great G10 there, and you give him a couple of these and he is out. That is what this is for, it's a, you know, G10 is a hard plastic, it will probably even break glass or crack rocks. Not that I'm going to do it because it's not my knife, but it's a it's a hard broad point that would do any of that pressure point type stuff pretty well, I guess. Um, and then we've got the extra lock for the liner lock, which again leans towards a pretty hard using knife. It's just on the side of the blade here, um, and it does make it for does make for a um, you know I guess an extra measure against accidentally unlocking the knife and you know it closing on your hand. And then I guess we're talking in situations where you're a bit clumsy and might be using big gloves in high stress situations. This is definitely a gloves knife overall. I'll cover that in a second, but um, yeah, just uh, extra little features for the uh, more earnest amongst us perhaps rather than just us standard knife guys. And last of all, the flipper tab. You know, initially I thought this was a really stupid, I thought they'd just done the flipper tab backwards. I was not thinking tactically enough for sure because I was looking at it and I was like, so the jimping is here, but it's not affecting how it flips, so it's not a point of grip. Um, and then when you have it open, your thumb's not pushing against it, so it's not gripped this way. It's, and I'm like, well, they don't want you to hold it here. I was actually quite puzzled. It's just light jimping, but it's obviously there for a reason. I was like, what is, what is the go with this? And then it clicked with me that when the knife is closed and you are using it as said coubaton, you can wrap your hand around the blade and that is when you strike things, the knife won't fly out of your hand. So you push your thumb over the back of it and you have your little uh, forefinger resting there and you are good to make some devastating blows. That's a lot of damage. So that are the, those are three sheepdog features that I can pick on the knife. So you know what? I know I'm a bit derisive of the whole thing, but hey, this is a serious concern for some folks, namely, you know, I guess law enforcement type dudes and, you know, just the general, the folks who see the world that way. So there are some features here for you, for sure. So it's the negatives of the knife, the things I haven't enjoyed about the knife. Well, let's talk about this blade again, because it's quite thick at the edge. And you know what, this is a fixable problem, but it isn't really in this instance because this isn't my knife and I don't really want to experiment with other people's knives because I just don't like doing it. I like to be able to ruin my own knife, take it off of my head and not have to send embarrassing emails or all that sort of stuff. So uh, as it comes though, or as it's come to me, uh, it is just a little bit thick. It's It affects cutting in a way that whilst you can cut normal stuff just fine, like this will be a knife that will slice held paper fine, but then when you go to say cut thick rope, it's just not gonna have that level of bite that a really thin edge will have to get that rope slash or cut started. Um, I'll show you what I mean. So if you can see like the thicker edge sort of just deflects straight off this pretty nasty plastic rope, and this is probably one of the harder to cut ropes out there, but Again, I think a bit more bite. I know they're trading off um, a bit of durability when they you know, thicken the edge, when they thin out the edge a little bit. But um, yeah, I wouldn't mind just a little bit more bite because I feel that this task might actually be within the spec of the knife as well. So just something, but for your everyday cutting, it'll probably do just fine. Like again, it'll shave hair and slice paper and cut food and do all that cool stuff. But it's a um, yeah, just a bit of a, a thick edge for, for my liking. Um, another thing is, this is a knife for gloves and, you know, for dudes with really rough hands. And look, I do a lot of cutting my hands, and I actually have a fairly physical job. My hands aren't, um, you know, little boys' hands. They they're, they have some callus to them. They're not good-looking hands at any, for any sense. They're covered in scars and got calluses, especially my index and my middle finger and my thumb. Uh, even still, there is some sharpness to this knife. It's an angry little knife, jagged little fellow it is. It's got jimping everywhere all over it. Uh, and then the G10 handle has this diamond checkered consistency to it, which is quite rough. So if you were to rub your hand against it back and forward, you'd have a blister fairly quickly, you know, within about you know, two or three minutes. Not that you're ever going to do that, but replicating that to pe perhaps using it all day or using it for a long term, uh, you're going to get some blisters on your inner pinky here from the aggressive liner jimping down the bottom, and you're going to get some um, 
general pinch from their fairly rough uh, lock bar release as well. But yeah, mainly down this end of the knife, it's just a little bit rough. And gloves will mitigate this problem absolutely, but you know, I've got to cover it from all bases, you know? So that is that. Um, it's got some slow action. It does flip, but you need to flip it specifically. So it's, and this isn't a super negative point because you can always just do this. But when I'm flipping it, uh, you know, let's watch a few flips while I'm talking. Uh, when I'm flipping it, it does uh, seem to be a little bit slow and a little bit particular. It's got some really big, thick bronze phosphor washers, which is great. Um, but yeah, without having to, you know, you can back it off and make it a little bit easier, but um, I don't really like doing that. I like to keep it how they like to sell it. Um, keep that perfect centering, all that sort of good stuff that this knife has got going for it. And yeah, just a little bit slow on the flip. But it does happen, and it happens fine. But the main thing, and also back to this flipper, is it's really, really low. And I found that a really low flipper like this on a knife with a predominantly straight edge, I do like the blade shape, but the flipper does cause some awkward situations when you're cutting against surfaces. It actually makes a fair bit of negative space from about here to here. So this, the, between where my, this finger is and this finger is pointing, is actually fairly hard to get contact unless you go to the edge of a table. So you're gonna do the bulk of your cutting with this forward edge. Um, and that's just kind of how it works out. And it's not the worst thing in the world, but um, it, it, if I made this a little bit lower, it would probably just make it from there. So you'd have more to cut with. But that's just a, a very certain type of cutting that I do that I've noticed that with, I guess. So there we are. Uh, and last of all, the liner lock is pretty difficult to disengage. They haven't really given you much in terms of a cutout. They've given you a finger groove for when you're holding it, but um, you have to push your thumb in there and really just rake it against that harsh jimping. And it goes across, no worries, but um, it is just pretty firm. So it's just another thing you need to know about the knife. Not the end of the world. None of these things are the end of the world, but they do definitely steer this more into the group of people who are uh, using it for more intense purposes. It's an ideal knife for a policeman. Um, for someone who, for if you're at work all day and you're using something that is, you don't want to be particularly worried about using, but, um, and you're probably going to wear gloves while using it, it's going to do some great work for you. Just when you're using it as an EDC, which is how I carried it um, in, in my weeks that I've had with it, um, just a few problems that would probably put it beyond what I would recommend just for the average knife user. But there you go, that's my review of the Hoag uh, EX02. It's a well-made knife, it's a well-designed knife for its purpose, and if you keep it within that, pur within that purpose, I think it's gonna do really well for you. I'll see you in the next video, guys. Goodbye.